you don't know what you're going to encounter. I'm Zach George. I train dogs, and this is my new dog, Inertia. I'm taking you along as I train her from day one. You can start from the beginning or pick up anywhere and start learning. Welcome to the dog training experience. In this episode, we're gonna take our training into the real world and see how Inertia does. Our patrons on Patreon are responsible for bringing you today's episode. If you want to support our shows, check out our Patreon link and consider making between a $2 and $10 monthly contribution. And for the most detailed dog training book I've ever written, check out my second book. I'll have all the links below. So we're at the pumpkin patch right now, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to bring Inertia out, expose her to some pumpkins and people. Can I have a sit? No. Well, at least I get a weight, so I'm going to reward the weight. Right now she's pretty reluctant to pay attention to me, freshly out of the car in a brand new place, but she is holding her weight. I think if anyone were to get within six feet though, she'd be going nuts. She'd be going pretty crazy. Look at her, she's like, what is this? So interested. Remember, dogs are less likely to listen when they first get to a new place. The only way to improve on this over time is to bring them to tons of new places to practice. And I mean, just look at how her nose goes to work. I'm gonna be a little tolerant of the pulling here just cause she's curious and young. It's obvious that we're doing a lot of these scenes here in new places and you see a lot of redundancy, but when you have such a young dog like this, the only way to really teach them to be reliable is by giving them exposure to lots of different things. And once a year, we have the opportunity to give her exposure to pumpkins. Oh, let's go check out these scarecrows over here. I wonder what she's gonna make of those. I bet those will throw her off, but let's let her explore those. Where possible, just try to be one step ahead of your dog to anticipate how they're going to behave, but always be flexible too, because they don't always react how we think they're going to react. Here's the scarecrows. See, she's a little cautious. Nice job, girl. Look at her getting on this weird surface here. That's very cool. Now she's noticed the little scarecrows. See, she actually was like, whatever, that's cool. She's more interested in the hay. Here, get some. Come on, hop up. Yeah, oh, paws up is coming in handy here. Of course, I somehow have to get her facing the other direction. Can you sit? Yeah, there we go. So this is good. I mean, it's just a stay. It's just a stand. Now she's in a sit, but she's on this new weird surface. Who knows how that experience will come in handy later in her life. So really good job. There's been a pumpkin casualty over here. So this is, you guessed it, a good opportunity for a real life leave it training session. So I see it. I'm going to be one step ahead of her. I'm going to say, leave it alone. Come here. I'd rather not intervene. I'd rather her be presented with it and automatically leave it alone. So I'm gonna give her some direction here. Leave it. Okay, we can get warmed up with that. Sit, leave it. Okay, kind of. Sit, good, nice job. Very good, leave it alone. It would be great to be able to walk past this. Maybe I could try and do a real slow pass with her looking at me or kind of a life hack is I could maybe run past it and get her chasing me so she forgets about it. Leave it. Okay, come on, let's go. Good job. All right, that was pretty successful. So Patrick runs the pumpkin operation around here. Okay, and you are? This is Inertia. I love Inertia. Uh, good name, right? <laughs> yeah, always in motion, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, you want the belly rub? <laughs> okay, yeah. Daddy, can I have my belly rub? Yeah, I'm sure you can. So there's pedestrians over here and pumpkin purchasers, and she's not going too wild, so I'm happy with that. We've been here about 15 or 20 minutes and she's becoming more and more manageable. So I enjoy that. One more. Can I have a wave? Typically, dogs will become more comfortable and able to listen to you once you've spent a little time in a new place. That's the perfect time to try asking for some of their basic training to start giving them the experience of listening to you somewhere new and exciting. Be prepared for them to struggle more with their basic training than they do at home though. Remember, stay patient. The more you practice, the better they'll get. Right now, my goal is just to get her doing this around all of this, mm -hmm. looking they at me. On you. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, this is turning out to be an incredible training experience. I'll be honest, I thought she was going to be a little more high maintenance on this particular trip. But right now, I mean, look at her. She's in a settle with all of this chaos going on around her. Well, she was. All good things must come to an end, I suppose. Can I have a wave? Yeah, there we go. Good. Can have a stand. 
It's a great idea to practice your dog's tricks in front of an audience to help them learn to listen to you even when a crowd of people is right next to them. Here we go, so doing tricks in public now. She, I'm having to give her a lot more treats than normal, but that's because it's a tough environment for her. Okay, Inertia is doing great with some of the easier tricks she's learned, but let's try something a little more challenging. I wonder if she can stay in her heel around all of this excitement. Come here. Yes, here. Look at me. Boy, you're way off right now. There we go. Yes, look at me. Yep, good work. Wait. Pretty rusty, but you can see where it's headed. Good, wait. Look at me. Just trying to get some attention and then I'll let her go. Yes, okay, all done. Overall, great experience. Inertia is showing steady progress every time we go out. So, I'm really excited. Bree and I thought it would be a great idea to take Inertia to a local concert and get her used to some loud sounds and crowds, but nature had other plans. It looks like this local concert that we were going to attend with Inertia is probably gonna be rained out, but I still have training to do with my dog. So while we're here, I found this like isolated spot over here where we can do some training. You know, many dogs are uncomfortable in the rain. A great way to prevent this is to purposefully take your dog out, even in bad weather, to show them that rain is normal. And hey, it can even be fun sometimes. But look at these birds over here. That giant white bird over there is a massive distraction to her. And there's this flock of ducks. I've been here, I don't know, a minute, 60 seconds or so. Let's see how responsive Inertia is to taking direction from me. Inertia, come. Yes, good girl. Okay, that was good. She came to me. I'm going to let her go back to doing her thing. Let her check out the bird. Inertia, come. Oh, that was great. Give me a sit. Yes, love that. Boy, she's off to a good start with this training session. Have you ever noticed with your own dog it's challenging for them to listen when the ground is wet? That's because rainfall causes tons of interesting scents called petrichor. Those smells get stirred up, which can be extra distracting for dogs if they haven't practiced training in the rain before. Come here. Yes, perfect, sit, good. That's good. Yes, look at me. Okay, wait. Yes, there we go. Now I got you. Look at me. Leave it alone. Look at me. No ma'am, come here. I was just doing a drill right there. I was asking myself, all right, if I were in a public situation where I really had to get her to listen to me and didn't have the luxury of letting her explore, would I be able to do it? And the answer is not really. I mean, I got a little bit of compliance, which is better than nothing. So I'm just gonna continue to work on it. But the ground scents here are insane. So she's really dialed into that. That means they haven't become normal enough to her yet. Okay, come on. Yes. Easy, wait, leave it alone. I'm gonna take a break now and just let her go back to smelling the ground, but I am going to enforce like leave it. I don't want her picking up stuff off the ground. So I'll have to watch her closely. So if she does offer her attention to me, I'll, I'll try to reinforce that. So pretty good training session. Got some compliance from her, but she's still very, very curious and interested. That's a symbol of a very intelligent dog. So I think she can tell that she has a lot to learn about the world and she's pretty anxious to learn as much as she can. Okay, we're back home and my wife Bree caught this clip of Inertia and I during a barking fit. And I wanted to share it with you so that you can see how I communicate and reason with her during these times. <laughs> Quiet, yes, yes, hey, that was good. Quiet, yes, perfect. Here I'm acknowledging the very brief moment of quiet to let her know what I like before she has a chance to bark again. Yes, good, I like the effort. Can you settle? Oh, you're so good. I love when that works. So that was a quick but great example of how I reason with Inertia when she's barking and I would prefer her to be quiet. All this training is starting to pay off. The next day, we decided to take Inertia to the Mississippi River for the first time and we were all in for a few surprises and training challenges. Can I have a sit? Nope, she's still intrigued by this location. Unreliable, so we'll stay here till she becomes reliable. Sit. 
Good. Thank you. There we go. So there's our set. Look at me. Good. Can I have your foot? I'll take that. We wave. Good. Can you stand? Wait. So it took staying here for like, what, 60 seconds before she became compliant? And the idea is if you do this enough, your dog just really starts to get it. Dig. What's this? Dig. Good job. Okay, all done. No more digging. Wait. It's so important to carefully practice your dog's training around traffic so that they have experience listening to you when cars are nearby. Yes. Okay, let's go. Oh boy, this squirrel should give us a nice challenge. Wait, you may not go after that. No, ma'am. Wait. Yes, wait. Yes, I know, that's tough. Squirrel just feet away. She really wants to go after it. Okay. She just realized there's water there. Seeing them react for the first time, she's like, whoa, that's strange. Like just this sudden change in terrain. Dogs notice those things, things that are out of the ordinary. So I'm just really focused on giving her a tour of this general area. I thought I'd come to this place on the Mississippi River. We're just doing some training in different places here. And this was a nice location that I thought would give me an opportunity to train in a new place that's not extremely high traffic right now. So there's a person here or there or a dog here and there that walks by. It's so beneficial to come to places like this and just sit and spend time with your dog, letting them take it all in. She's noticing all sorts of things. She keeps looking at the boat, then she's like, what's that over there? Let's see if I can get her attention on me out here. It's a brand new place. This is literally the first time she's been here. Hey, Inertia, do you see this? And of course, as soon as we go live, Inertia decides to completely tune me out. Good thing you guys like to watch me struggle. Okay, quiet. Okay, so here's a barking outburst. Let's see. Inertia. Will you sit? Perfect. Yes. Good. Right there. So I was able to get her attention in that case. Look at me. She's still a little distracted. In that case, you know, she like started barking at the runner. Lie down. But what's good about it is the runner gets away pretty quick. So it makes it a little easier to communicate, but that's why I'm out here because you never know when you're gonna be surprised with a distraction and this is exactly what she needs. When you go in public, it's impossible to predict what and when you're going to encounter something. So that's what I like about public training. Like we had the jogger come by just a moment ago, someone with the skateboard. And so really desensitizing her and just getting her used to it is my main objective. And if I can get her, see like right here, she's pulling. And right, really, I'm, I'm pretty okay with that right now because it's a new place and I want her to go and smell and see what it's like. Hey, over here, inertia, come here. Making sure she's just kind of generally responsive. Like, look at this, an orange peel. Leave it alone. Oh boy, leave it. Good, see this? Leave it. Make it extra hard. Yes, that was great. Good, okay, let's go this way, come on. Very good, okay, so I got her attention there. She did a sit for me. Inertia, let's go, come here, this way. Maybe she just needed a minute to process it. Hey, over here, this way. Perfect, good, nice job. Leave it alone? Yes, come on, perfect. Oh, that was good. So yeah, I mean, that's the kind of training I'm doing here. Leave it alone, good. Inertia, come on, let's go, over here. Very good, so I was able to call her off of dog poop. That's always exciting when you can be more interesting than poop. So I've got her on a long lead now because there's not many people out here and so I'd like her to have some room to explore. I'm getting excited. She's playing Frisbee in public. That's new behavior. Yep. I mean, she does it here and there. So ready and go. Got to really stay on this lead in this new place, but that was great. So her interest is still kind of intermittent. We're really documenting this, but she's starting to get more and more interested in Frisbee, which I like. It's very selfish on my part because I just love playing Frisbee with dogs. But if she turns out to not love doing it, that's okay. I'm prepared for that. Hey, what's this? Oh, what's that? Ready? Go. Beautiful. There we go. Got her interest in it. Come on, bring it to me. Oh, no, she does still get distracted by the lead. Uh, when she, we're playing fetch on a lead, so I've got to contend with that, but not a big deal. 
Leave it alone. Good girl. Yes. <laughs> See, you don't know what you're going to encounter. I'm so thrilled with the nurse's reaction to that scary sound. I mean, she was startled, that's understandable, but she recovered quickly and just seemed a little curious. So I'm gonna let that pass, let her check that out. One thing that helps with inertia is being there when the spark does go, go. So right there, because I've been trying to get her into it and she's like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Into it and now she's like, oh, there's something over there. Which is completely normal at this stage of frisbee training. I've done this three times before with three different frisbee dogs, and it was similar in this way. Also, I find that when I get peppy and playful, she likes to chase me. Inertia! Hey! She sees these people coming. There's a small group of people coming. Hey, what's this? Come on, let's go. With any dog new to training, it's completely normal for training to be a little chaotic at first. Just stick with them. Go. Good girl. Wait, she's not used to playing with a lead on because we play in the yard a lot, which is fenced. We're not encouraging jumping, doing a max of like what, eight to 10 minutes a day, maybe four days, five days a week. Leave it and go. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it. That was great. Come around, go. Yes, good, come on, let's go. This way. So fun. Ready, come around, go. Keeping them real low, nice job. You wanna try one more? Come on, come around, go. Ah, yes, there we go. <laughs> so, hey, not bad, I'm, that would have been for extra credit what I hope to accomplish on this training session out here getting her to play frisbee in public, a new place. Anyway, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's yes. great to have lots of our Instagram family here. Yes. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok to see live training like this and keep up with Inertia's progress in real time. Subscribe to the channel because you are definitely going to want to see what Inertia does in the next few episodes. If you're working on training your dog, check out both of my books. They're a great companion to this series. In the next episode, things go from normal to downright scary. Oh, look at that, someone's at the door.